Hello friends, hi, I'm Dr. Shonali Chandra and I welcome you all to our YouTube channel Medicine Decoded. Now in the previous two videos, we spoke about the basics of thyroid physiology. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about how thyroid metabolism or physiology changes for a pregnant woman. So let's get started and talk about thyroid metabolism in pregnancy and let's have a look at this diagrammatic representation to drive in some important concepts. Now throughout pregnancy there is an increased demand for thyroid hormone by the pregnant mother. Now that's because pregnancy is a state where there is an increase in BMR, basal metabolic rate. It increases uh, about 20 to 25 percent during pregnancy. There is also increased oxygen consumption by the pregnant woman and also yes there is an increased oxygen uh, requirement by the baby also so to meet these requirements yes of course there's an increased demand for thyroid hormone production on the other hand there is also placental transfer of thyroid hormones for the baby as well so there is increased requirement for the fetus as well that's because the fetus is exclusively dependent on the maternal thyroid hormones during the first 12 weeks of uh, gestation right so yes these thyroid hormones they are able to freely cross the placenta maternal TSH or maternal thyrotropin releasing hormone they do not cross the placenta so the fetus is exclusively dependent on maternal source of thyroid hormones for the first 12 weeks of gestation moreover to meet the increased rate of uh, thyroid hormone production there is also an increased iodine requirement by the pregnant woman and this on an average is about 250 micrograms per day so during pregnancy we also see that there is an increase in renal blood flow there is an increase in glomerular filtration rate and therefore there is also an increased renal iodine clearance and that also contributes to increased iodine requirement during pregnancy okay now the question arises as to what is responsible or what drives this increased hormone production directly so the placenta secretes the hormone hcg human chorionic gonadotropin now this hormone has thyrotropic activity if you remember hcg is a glycoprotein hormone containing alpha and beta subunits the beta subunit is the specific subunit whereas the alpha subunit is shared with other hormones as well like fsh lh and TSH as well so there is thyrotropic activity in this hormone HCG and it is this hormone that stimulates the thyroid gland of the mother to produce increased amounts of thyroid hormones right so what we see in pregnancy is that there is an increased vascularity of the thyroid gland and there is also hyperplasia of the thyroid gland now having said that please remember that any goiter any enlargement of the thyroid gland should definitely be evaluated as being pathological okay so yes there is an increased vascularity and hyperplasia but do not ignore any goiter any pathological visible enlargement of thyroid gland during pregnancy now you can understand here that a woman is supposed to increase her thyroid hormone gland production uh, during the state of pregnancy if the thyroid gland is unable to do so like for example if there is a iodine deficient diet for example if there is autoimmune thyroiditis then the woman will not be able to meet the increasing demands of thyroid hormone in pregnancy and will develop goiter will become frankly clinically hypothyroid so pregnancy does not lead to hypothyroidism by itself Self, but it creates conditions in which maybe a woman has subclinical hypothyroidism and it becomes clinical 
right maybe she has uh, auto antibodies and then she develops uh, uh, clinical uh, hypothyroidism during pregnancy right or she develops goiter during pregnancy so what we hear often that pregnancy is a goitrogenous state now moving on let us also talk about what happens to the hormone levels in circulation in serum all right so if you look at this uh, graph here which on the x-axis I'm showing to you the gestation in weeks so at the end there is term this is early pregnancy here and if you recognize the graph the one graph that you can recognize here is the red colored curve here which represents the HCG hormone production during pregnancy so it peaks in the first trimester here somewhere around 8 to 10 weeks and the levels then decline to plateau around 16 to 18 weeks time right so what we see here that because of increased hcg here in the first trimester itself paralleling with the rise in hcg we see an increase this green colored curve here we see an increase in free t4 levels right so they parallel the rise in hcg right so when we had talked about the regulation of thyroid hormone secretion in the previous video we had discussed how the body tries to keep the free hormone levels in circulation under normal values right so when there is a, an increase in free t4 values it will send a negative feedback on the pituitary and there is going to be a decreased in TSH levels and that is what we see happening here so as the free T4 levels are rising in the first trimester the serum TSH values are falling down uh, as compared to the pre-pregnancy levels and after the first trimester the free T4 hormone levels they begin to normalize they fall down again free T4 values and consequently the TSH levels also normalize in the second half of pregnancy in the once the first trimester is over now a very important point to note here other two uh, graphs that I have shown you here is the curve that is the pink colored curve now this is showing thyroid binding globulin levels in the serum now thyroid binding globulin is coming from the liver now estrogen in pregnancy is directly stimulating increased production of thyroid binding globulin so what we see here is that the levels of thyroid binding globulin are rising in the first trimester and they plateau somewhere around 16 weeks the plateau somewhere around 16 weeks okay this is 16 weeks here the levels plateau so what we see here is now that there is more thyroid binding globulin to bind to thyroid hormone in circulation that's why even though the total production of t4 is increasing even though the total T4 levels in circulation are increasing because more thyroid binding globulin is available in the circulation to bind to thyroid hormones, the free T4 levels come back to normal. So let's say that a new equilibrium is reached okay and in the new equilibrium there is going to be an increased thyroid binding globulin circulation there is going to be increase in total T4 in circulation and the three T4 levels remain in the normal range and as far as the TSH levels are concerned they may be slightly lower right as compared to the non-pregnant values or the pre-pregnant values but they essentially will be in the normal reference range as well and that's why you need to keep in mind what is the clinical implication of knowing this uh, changes in the serum hormone levels because when you are diagnosing hypothyroidism during pregnancy the reference range is slightly lower the normal reference range for TSH values is slightly lower as compared to the reference ranges outside 
outside of pregnancy right so i'm more concerned when diagnosing hypothyroidism with the upper reference limit for serum tsh so the upper reference limit for normal serum tsh in the first trimester is highlighted 2.5 miu per liter and the second and third trimester highlighted at 3 miu per liter anything above this value for serum tsh is considered for hypothyroidism diagnosis right now please remember these are pregnancy trimester specific ranges they can vary from population to population in different parts of the world depending upon what are the prevalent normal reference ranges in that population outside of pregnancy and that will determine what will be the reference range with pregnancy now these uh, reference ranges are also endorsed by the government of india guidelines now with subsequent videos i will be talking more about hypothyroidism as well as hyperthyroidism in pregnancy